I've got fears too, like quicksand. Quicksand scares me. You Reminds know, me, I have a great quicksand gun. What's your quicksand go to? I'm not telling you because you not don't part have of the video. one. No, it's, it's not part of the video. Nope. Amateur. It's not a thing. He's a fraud. He's making this fraud. up. Fraud. No quicksand gun. Hey, Evan. So when I invited you to go hunting with me, I had something else in mind. We were gonna hunt criminals. No, we're gonna hunt turkeys. Together. You bring anything to hunt with? Could you hand me my battering? I dropped it down there on the way up. The turkey killing machine. You know, I'm not gonna take you hunting again until you go to sportsmansguide.com. You can get bow and arrow, hunting clothes, you can get guns, you can get ammo, you can get all kinds use of stuff. Use code VENGEANCE. Nope, not vengeance, you use code WARPOET. Use code BATMAN. Nope, we just went over it, it's code WARPOET. Ah, uh, at checkout, stack on you. Stack? Yeah, stack, I'll call the commissioner. Let's go. Batman always gets his man. Do you have any water? Do you have any electrolytes? All right, what's happening, folks? I am joined by Warrior Poet instructors Josh and Paul, and we're talking about quick reactionary rifles. We have what you guys are bringing to the party. We'll provide context as we go, and we got some different options to talk through some pros and cons for you viewers who may be thinking about a quick reactionary rifle. So the way this will work is we'll talk through just real quickly what have you got and why, and then we'll talk about all kinds of contexts and bullet selections and different gun options and kind of what are the crazy scenarios y'all are thinking about in your heads in case stuff goes sideways. So Josh, lead the charge. What do you got? So this is a, uh, a gun that I built, a seven and a half inch 300 blackout. It's kind of a budget gun I built. It's a PSA upper, it's a CMMG lower. It does have a Geisley SSA trigger in it. 300 blackout, I can get a shorter barrel length overall. So it makes it a good truck gun, good CQB gun because I can get a shorter package with a similar ballistics to an AR. Got it. Are you running subs or supers for 300? Uh, I have these for supers. I don't have a suppressor on this one, so subs is kind of irrelevant. I feel yeah. like it should be illegal to have a 300 blackout that doesn't have a can on it. How do you feel about that? <laughs> I would agree. It's just a process. It's a process? Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's a journey for some of us. Got it. Okay, very good. Yeah. Just just wondering. All right, Paul, what are you doing? All right, so I'm running a uh, primary weapon systems, 11 half inch upper with a uh, silent co suppressor, cloud defensive, rain lights, EOTech all the way to the back here, uh, I'm running a stock sock. It's got some elastic straps on here, allow me to keep a tourniquet attached to my butt stock. If I've got to grab my rifle and nothing else, I've at least got this. I've got something that can uh, try and keep fluids in the body if necessary. How about you just don't get shot? I, don't I agree. Don't suck at the That's, thing. I thought we had this conversation when it came to cardio, right? When faster, you don't need cardio. That's a good point. This. Uh, this is actually made by one of our own Warrior Poet Sight instructors, Sam Houston, and uh, Blue Alpha Gear. So, uh, Link down below, guys. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, this is a uh, pretty good option that I'm just testing out uh, in the last uh, few weeks. And you accidentally put an EOTech on? Yeah, with a uh, Unity riser, though, so I feel like that kind of cancels out the mm, EOTech. That's all right. Come it's, on. it's better. Come on. It's better. better. And what kind of can you got? Uh, so this is a Synlogico, uh Omega 6K. All right, fantastic. Nothing super sexy today, guys. I, this is my truck gun. It's a BCM upper with a Vortex Razor 1 to 6, a Streamlight flashlight, and I've got a Surefire War Comp on the front, which I can put a can on quickly uh, or take off Warrior Poet Sling. Yeah, all right. Look at three that. for three. All right, so as our viewers are weighing through of like, all right, quick reactionary rifle, something that you grab if something happens, what are the things that you guys were thinking of when you came to this decision? I think kind of get away a lot of considerations in terms of, so I think weight is one, right? Anytime we're looking at any piece of equipment, I think weight's important. Terminal ballistics, right? Select the right round type to go with the, uh, with the weapon platform. Make sure that the round selection matches barrel twist, matches barrel length, so you're getting the terminal effect on target that you want. Also, I think running suppress is not a bad idea. This is specifically my home defense gun. Reliability with a suppressor, this primary weapon system. So this is a, uh, this is a gas piston gun. That's kind of uh, how I came to this setup. Okay, wrong. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Going on to what Paul said about ballistics, understanding barrel lengths and velocities and kinetic energy and everything, I can get very similar kinetic energy at the same distances out of a eight inch 300 blackout or an eight inch AK 
um, that I can out of a 10 and a half inch AR-15 and 5.56. Got it. Just because of the bullet weight and everything else, and I'm not trying to chase those magic velocity numbers like I am when I get the short-barreled uh, ARs. What are the contexts you guys are thinking of? When I say, hey guys, quick reactionary rifle, all right? What, what are the contexts you're thinking of that brought this gun? This together? one is uh, specifically like a truck gun that I would I would pack for a, like a counteractive shooter. Okay. Um, so it's something small I can stash in a bag, something I can stash in, in a vehicle. It's as compact as possible for clearing through a movie theater, through a school, through a church, and a seat in a strictly CQB environment. Got it, so you're thinking active killer response, okay? Uh, what about you, Paul? So for me, this is strictly home defense. Okay. Uh, I don't run a truck gun. I don't carry one with me in most cases, not all the time. Okay. Certain times I will, but generally speaking, uh, portability, compatibility wasn't a big issue because it's home defense gun. So uh, yeah, this is strictly for inside the house. Okay, say that you were going to some area where you thought, hey, something could go sideways in this more open space, and you wanted a truck gun. So let's say that. Would you change anything? Like for instance, you got like a can and you look kind of heroed out uh, more than we do. Do you worry about like legal considerations and it being shown in a court or anything like that? No, I really don't. Uh, and I'm also not, I'm not too concerned. I guess, you know, again, context drives everything, right? In terms of, uh, you know, equipment selection. In most civilian law enforcement contexts, and I think we talk a lot about this in our, uh, in our classes, especially rifle classes, we talk about kind of where, without getting too down the legal rabbit hole, um, how far out can you justify use of deadly force? Is it really gonna be at rifle distances in most civilian law enforcement context, or is it gonna be closer in pistol distances, and we're using rifles at pistol distances because rifles are better at doing the job, putting bad guys down. So like Josh, he selected his uh, primarily for working inside buildings and structures. 100, 100 meters and in. Right, much, yeah. got it. So, okay. so we have different events that have arisen in the past, like there's the Sutherland Spring shooting where Stephen Williford, in his home, heard shots fired down the street at his local church. He grabbed a gun. As he started shooting at me, I moved to the front of the truck Great. and stuck the rifle over the hood of the truck and engaged him. And he ended up putting a dude down, ended up in a car chase scene, but he ended up killing the guy. And so that was a time where he grabbed a quick reactionary rifle. Those are distances and scenarios where a rifle absolutely gave a, a better advantage over a pistol. Why is it that you don't carry a truck gun as much? Because I don't think that uh, just, we look at kind of what most self-defense shootings look like. Yeah. Uh, we're, it's highly unlikely that I'm gonna find myself in a situation where I'm gonna need a rifle. Um, or even maybe want one over a pistol in a lot of cases. And I'm a little more concerned, uh, you know, I don't live in a high crime area, but vehicle break-ins are much more prevalent than active shooters are. Yep. So I am kind of more concerned, and I know there's things you can do to secure your rifle in your vehicle, but at the same time, as you add levels of security, then you, uh, you basically, you've increased the amount of time it takes you to access your firearm typically. Yep. So I'm a little more concerned about leaving a rifle unattended in my vehicle in certain areas uh, than I am about having this. It's more likely that my vehicle get broken into and I will just have handed a bad guy a rifle on the street than it is that I'm actually gonna use this. Williford, did he did he get the rifle out of his house or out of his vehicle? Out of his house. Okay, so out he had that, house. again, so this is, in, this is in my house, you know, secured as much as I needed to be inside. If I remember correctly from the interview you did with him, I want to say his his rifle was not loaded and he had to get ammo and load the gun before he went out to meet the shooter, correct? Yeah, during the shootout, he was stacking mags quickly. Uh, so I always have magazines stacked. You know, I have, usually if I have my home, this is my home defense gun, but when I have a home defense gun, I have a magazine in it, but I might have a round in the chamber. Or depending on your situation with kids, you know, having a gun cabinet or a gun safe and that has your guns in it there. Uh, when my son was really little, I had a gun cabinet. My guns were loaded in the cabinet, but it wasn't really access to him being, you know, responsible gun ownership. Um, and then also that goes into marrying the proper round, kind of like Paul mentioned earlier, with the barrel that you have, the yep. gun that you have. So for a 300 blackout, I said, I don't have a suppressor for this, so I'm just running supersonic ammo. Um, I can still get out, you know, 150 pretty confidently. Whereas if I have something like this, right? So this is my, this is my 11 and a half inch black rain in 5.56. Now I have a mid-length gas system in 11 and a half inch barrel because I wanted to increase that velocity past 2,500 feet per second, which is one of the issues with 5.56 five, and shorter barrels, right? And so I might be running a 77 or 79 grain bullet or even some of the specialized short barrel rifle bullets out of this versus if I go to a gun store and buy 55 grain American Eagle M193, it's great for shooting on the range, you know, for practicing and it's cheaper and everything else. But I might have separate a separate loadout that has 
a heavier grade bullet spe specified for my round or for my setup if, I, if I'm running a gas a, a suppressor on a, on a gas gun or whatever. Uh, Paul, what kind of ammo are you using? Like uh, in terms of like, you got frangible, you got some defensive load, you got normal ball. What all you... that explosive bird bear. <laughs> these are planet killers. These are, what these are John. HDP. <laughs> Uh, just sorry, thirty round magazine seated pretty easily. Just then, I'll put it back. That's all. Yeah, I remember a video where it didn't. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> oof. This is a uh, this is a Barnes TSX fifty five grain loaded by Black Hills. Okay. Uh, it's optimized for uh, shorter barrel lengths. Okay. Uh, matter of fact, this round has the it, in, in ballistic gel at least has the uh, roughly the same performance out of a ten and a half inch barrel as it does out of a twenty inch barrel. So I selected this just for running a shorter gun. Got it. And it's a self-defense Yes, round. absolutely. Got it. Cool. Uh, for me, I keep a full magazine uh, with nothing in the pipe. That's how all my guns are stored, whether it's in my vehicle or whether it's in my house. So it's aircraft loaded, which means all I have to do is charge the gun to put a round in. I don't do that with a gun that I have on me, obviously. So that's kind of a protocol as I grab, and it's just one layer of extra safety and somebody grabs that gun or I got kids and stuff to be able to run that bolt. And so that's one kind of safety uh, mechanism uh, that I do. Something that you said of like having a pistol in an urban context may be a really good idea. And we're gonna spill into a different video here that has more to do with like our active killer bag. I don't really want a rifle for a highly urbanized area. They see me with this rifle, now they're describing me as the shooter. And so it adds a, a level of, you know, that's scary, whereas if it was a pistol and I see blue lights, cops pull up, I can just holster and be ready to help render medical or information and stay on the perimeter of like, I want cops to be cops when they arrive and not me be in the fray with a big rifle. And so there's times where an active killer event would happen where I don't actually want to want to grab this. I just want the option. Sure. I also live out in the countryside, which informs my, you live in a city, I live in the country, which means I want to be able to have longer distances where I can solve problems. And I think this is better uh, for a civilian to have in rural areas, like quick reactionary sure. stuff of like, th there's stuff that can happen on my farm. A meth addict showed up at my doorstep yesterday. Uh, he'd OD'd, I had to rush him to the hospital. At his doorstep, not out in the middle of the field, 200 <laughs> meters away. Uh, if I had there. shot him, it would have been about about 25 meters. On it. Never mind, uh, he needed the rifle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, man, I could, I, I've, ugh, I don't want to get close. You're not a mask guy. No, I'll, I'll mask <laughs> for that real before. I'm like, quick for actually gun. I double mask, and then I, I vaccinate a few times, and then I get into the fight. Nice, and so that's nice. what I do. Josh, what are some uh, other guns? Uh, yeah, so this is a Sam 7K from Arsenal. Um, this one is a milled Bulgarian because it's, made, it's harder to import Russian ones. I have two Russian uh, Ismoshes at home, but uh, this one's Bulgarian because of the, the Obama era ban on Russian rifles coming into the country. Anyway, this is Sam 7K. Uh, this is a seven half inch barrel, if I remember correctly. Um, but the reason I brought this out with the folding stock, similar to like a SIG MCX, I can get this really small to put in a bag or underneath a seat in a truck or in a locking compartment in a vehicle. This is kind of like the poor man's 300 blackout. Yeah. Um, ballistically, this and 30-30 lever action and 300 blackout are all very similar, and I can get the similar distances out of this that I can get out of that 300 blackout and kinetic energy and all, terminal ballistics and all that kind of stuff. The downside of this is one, the ergonomics. Um, I ran an AK for a while, you know, working in the SF and contracting and everything else, and I'm pretty comfortable and confident with an AK, but it still is, for all intents and purposes, less ergonomic and, and slower if you want to get into like minutia than an AR is. Biggest concern I would have with this is the appearance. In the Western world, we've kind of associated this with bad people, whether it be communists or terrorists or whatever. For a good reason. Because yeah. Because we know that God and Eugene Stoner got together and exactly. created this, so yeah. we understand. It's the Trinity. Moses Browning, <laughs> Eugene Stoner, <laughs> Gaston Glock. Um, so anyway, if I was responding to a active shooter at a, a church or a school and I was running through the building with an AK versus an AR, I'd probably more likely be assumed that I was the bad guy just from the notions that we have that bad guys carry AK. So another one I brought is this uh, FN. This is a PS90, so it's got a 16 inch barrel on it. Um, you guys did a video on PCCs that I was not available for, so I thought I'd bring this out to represent the PCC community. FMP90 made 1990 uh, to basically give a PDW for soldiers that needed to defeat body armor. Can I see that while you talk about it? Um, so I call it that one the honey badger because it's small and angry, but it's shooting a 5.7 by 28 millimeter round and there's a whole variety of ammunition that's made for that. 27, 29 grain, it's like 50 grain bullets, typically it's a 40 grain bullet. 
Um, what I'm getting out of that is similar velocity to a short barreled AR. I'm getting in the 2000s. Ballistically, what I'm getting out of this is basically a 22 Magnum. So I'm in the same kinetic energy range as like the lower end of a, of a nine millimeter but I'm getting velocities that are rifle velocities. And what that allows me to do is, when you have active shooters that have soft armor on, it allows me to potentially penetrate soft armor uh, where a nine millimeter won't do it. And it's extremely low recoil, because uh, it basically kicks like a 22. And it's one of my favorite guns just because it's fun to shoot. Can I check it out real quick? Yeah. Just again, because I... I mean, it's got a 50 round magazine so, on it too. That's pretty good. Why does this thing get smaller every time I hand it to you? But then you hand it back to me, it gets bigger. It's bigger. Whoa, that's huge. I've never it's seen It's like an F2000 <laughs> over here, and it's like a P90 over here. I have different option guns for different setups. Around my house, I have a few different setups. One is kind of my homestead gun, and that's where I'm able to grab a suppressed gun that has a clip-on thermal, so that in the middle of the night, my alpacas start screaming bloody murder. I can just grab that and immediately yeah, heat signature. Let's leave our viewer who's considering a quick reactionary you know, go rifle, what are a couple considerations that, hey, remember this when you're putting together a gun? I'll go first, I wanna be able to have a sling so that I can go hands-on. So you must, must, must have a sling. Uh, and uh, you gotta have some type of optic. Your gun is not done until you have an optic, a sling, and I wanted to say more, but I'll you stick only get to two things. You took all the hard ones. I need a trigger and some bullets. And a sighting system. <laughs> Awesome. You saw me rushing like, and I'll go first. <laughs> All right, so because my gun is specifically set up, it's optimized for home defense for me, uh, then I'm going to go with a suppressor and a light. Suppressor, because I'm shooting indoors, auditory exclusion is a thing, but it's a psychological thing. It's not a physical thing. Our ears don't close up, and it doesn't, it doesn't prevent hearing damage. The light, because you got to be able to PID targets in the dark. PID, positively identify, all right? That's uh, to, when we're talking about uh, determining whether it's a shoot, no shoot, uh, known, unknown, you need to be able to see, right? You have to be able to see a threat, identify it as a threat before you can shoot. And we all know that most bad stuff happens at night when it comes to gunfighting, right? You know, like worrying about hearing loss when you're fighting in that one moment for your life is like driving a car off a cliff and worrying about scratching the pain at the bottom. Right, you know, but, it's I'm like, not, but I'm not worried about it because I have a suppressor on my home defense gun. Yeah, but I want to bring thunder. I want, I want to no. crush them psychologically and it instills far more fear. And you don't know how many dudes are around your house. It's not the one dude in there. It's who else okay, is working around. The, I don't have the team ninja fantasy of guys like just totally No, this is a real and, thing. Bad guys hunting past. I get it. You I understand one that. guy and when you have an alarm going off in a, a silenced gun, they may not register that a shot has even been fired so, out of your suppressed gun. Right, I get it. And if you drop one guy, all right, Right? And they may not know all the loud noises alarm. and they scatter. You have just cheated yourself out of countless conus kills that you might have otherwise gotten, John. I have lost this argument. <laughs> I have just officially lost this argument. So, two considerations. What do they need on their quick reactionary? So, since you guys are taking ahead. pretty Wait. much everything, yeah, um, other than bullets and a trigger. I would say specialized ammunition, um, having something that matches your rifle, whether it be home defense, or if I'm worried about longer range things or animals or whatever. So having ammunition that meets your rifle. Um, and then the last one, I'm gonna say modularity. Um, if I can have one lower receiver with a trigger that I think is good, whatever, whoever manufactures that is, uh, manufacturer that is, and have maybe multiple uppers where I have a home defense upper and I have a truck gun upper or whatever, and then ammunition that goes with that, might, it's less costly than buying multiple guns and gives you an opportunity to switch out because guns ultimately are tools and, and you use certain hammers for certain jobs and screwdrivers for certain jobs and having a good gun for that job um, could make a difference. False sledgehammer is the ultimate tool that can fix anything. If you're mad enough. If you're mad enough. That forearm strength. That's awesome. <laughs> Guys, this video has been on quick reactionary rifles. What did we miss in the comments? We're kicking stuff around. We're a bunch of old military grunts and now we uh, teach and we think through considerations like this and we do it with you warrior poets we appreciate you make sure you're subscribed to the channel toggle notifications about all like comment and check out our website warriorpoetsociety.com we've got our streaming service we got all products and stuff a lot of stuff that you may see in our videos may be there so make sure you check it out we appreciate the support train hard train smart and stay free